coming up on this episode of the Spiro podcast. Because when you have a camera in your hands, I mean, quite honestly, when you have a camera in your hands, hands, that's when you're making the most money. It's not when you're editing. Welcome to the Spiro podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business with your hosts, Todd Kivimaki and Craig Magro. Hi, and welcome to the Spiro Podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business. Uh, Spiro is a software platform designed to help you run your everyday business and help you scale it and grow it and manage it and just put in any other adjective you can think of that's beneficial to your business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Craig Magger. I had to change the opening up. I say the same thing every week, Todd. So, you know, you, you got to mix things up a little bit week, week to week. But uh, anyway, I'm, I'm Craig Magger. I'm host of the podcast. And that voice you just heard, that laugh you heard, of course, uh, Spiro owner and founder and and uh, co-host of the podcast, Todd Kivimaki. It's going to be a fun, fun podcast. I can feel it already, Todd. Oh, this is going to be a great one, Craig. This is uh, we've got some uh, listener questions today and it's the end of the day. So I typically <laughs> don't have a lot of sense to begin with, but I've got none left today. So uh, that's really going to help with uh, listenership, right? That's a great way to right, start a podcast. Right. But but we've got your questions and I'm excited to go through them today. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's before we dive into that, let, let me just say I've been jumping into the Spiro users group on Facebook um, and just seeing the interactions there and seeing some new names. And uh, just we just want to thank you to those of you that are, are uh, trying out the software and uh, in that user group. Uh, great questions there as well. Some good comments and feedback. And uh, yeah, I just it's it's cool to cool to see. And we're glad to meet some great new people and you know, fellow photographers and videographers, uh, vid, videographers. I was in radio for almost 20 years. You'd think I'd <laughs> learn, learn how to talk. Uh, anyway, just want to say thank you to all. Uh, I agree. That's the coolest thing. Sorry to cut you off, Craig. But y'all, yeah. y'all, like you post your, I'm just looking for my Spotify thing so I can show you who my most listened to was this year. But you guys post your most listened to and you guys post, you guys listen to us. Like I'm honestly, like it brings a tear to my eye when I saw that, you know, you guys posting that, that we're your top podcast. Like that is, that's like a surreal thing that it is. Craig, when we kicked around the idea of doing this podcast, I mean, seriously, <laughs> did we ever think people would listen to us? I was hoping so. I, I thought well, we had true. some good things to share, but you, you never know when things are going to go. But you know what's funny about you mentioning that? I was just looking at some of the analytics and, and statistics for the podcast, and I went back to when we first started it. It's like, we've come a long way. <laughs> so <laughs> th thank you. <laughs> thank you to yes. all of you listening and, and watching. Anyway. Yeah, that's it. We couldn't do it without you guys. Yeah. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your questions. And honestly, the encouraging just bumps you guys either send to my phone or send our email or bump us on social media. Like it is amazing. It's good to hear from you guys. It, it yeah. is really supportive. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's somewhat surreal and just humbling. So right. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. For a couple of guys from the the cornfields of Northwest Ohio. Yeah, it, it, seriously. Uh, th this was my most listened to. So you guys know, I, I just wanted to prove this here that I really am a Brandon Lake fan. But here was my most listened to. Let's see if I'll focus on. So I, I am. Know you uh, had in one. The, yeah, so that is now that's music, not podcast. But I'm in yeah. a top five one hundredths of a percent of a fan of theirs. So um, <laughs> I spent 8,927 minutes with Brandon Lake this year. Um, and that doesn't awesome. count the concerts I went to of his. So anyways, those stuff are kind of fun to ba go back and look at. But thank you guys right. for being great, great listeners. All right. That's a lot of gushing, but <clears throat> all authentic and, and uh, I mean every word of it. All right. So um, we're getting towards the end of the year here and uh, more and more people listening. And of course, the podcast really focusing on the business of real estate photography and videography. Mm -hmm. uh, just some great podcasts that are out there on the creative side. Uh, but we really mm -hmm. like to tackle the business side of things. And Todd, you said that we've we've had some really good questions come in uh, in the last few weeks here. And so we wanted to address some of those and, and talk about some of those questions and, and work through, the, through those and, and uh, hopefully bring some good information to you. So let's let's dive into it. 
Okay, question number one. I'm going to leave out names here just because I didn't get permission from these individuals. So um, okay. I'm going to leave out names. But uh, this individual said, I've been taking a deeper dive into some of your podcasts. And recently, I have a sales-related question for you. Uh, my plan for 24 is to offload my administrative responsibilities so that I can pretty much be a full-time salesperson for the business. What Smart. are the activities? Yeah. What are the activities that your sales team do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to mm -hmm. generate activity? Yeah, this is a great. I, I know this individual. He was at the rep conference and a very in, intelligent individual. So this is a great question. Um, Craig, I answered it for him. I have an email here. I have an answer, but you do this every day. What what would yeah. be your answer for that? Well, it's, it's a mix of things. Like I think I've shared in p past podcasts, I kind of have a hybrid role on both photographer and videographer and salesperson business development. Mm -hmm. So during the busy season, I'm mostly shooting, but at those shoots, I'm connecting with a lot of realtors. So there's relationship building happening there. Um, <clears throat> sometimes in between shoots, if I, you know, if I have the time, um, I'm making phone calls, I'm sending emails, I'm just touching base with current clients. I don't do a ton of what, what we would call in, in the sales, in sales lingo, prospecting new, new business. Um, but I am, I am asking for referrals. So number one, ask for referrals. If you have happy clients, don't be afraid to ask for a referral, especially within their brokerage, you know, <clears throat> say, Hey, i I appreciate the opportunity to work with you. you know, assuming that you're happy with everything we're doing, you know, is there anybody else in your group or your, you know, your office that you think might be able to benefit and we can help them build, you know, build their business as well. Mm -hmm. So ask for referrals when, when you're busy, that's an easy um, business building activity. Now today, Craig, Craig, can I, can I ask, hold, sorry, hold that thought. Can sure. I ask just a question? So yeah. you, you're asking for those, just, I want to be clear. So you're asking for those when you, you're on site doing the media or, or if, can you if the just clarify is, that? Absolutely. Yeah. If, if the realtor is at the listing that I'm shooting, yeah, uh, I'll ask for a referral. Uh, if okay. I have, t if I have time in between shoots, I might pick up the phone or shoot an email or a text, you know, mm -hmm. just to follow up, say I just shot somebody's listing yesterday. I'm going to follow up the next day. Hey, just want to make sure you got your media. You're happy with everything. Assuming you are, by the way, you know, would you be willing to share, you know, share us with somebody else within your office? We do have an agent mm -hmm. referral program, which we do. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, okay. different so, ways to do it. So that might be an easy way that if you have an agent referral program, that it's an easy way to potentially bring it up if someone's hesitant mm -hmm. to to just say, hey, will you recommend, will you refer me to someone else? At least you can feel as though you're giving them something for that referral. Is that kind of what the idea is? Maybe I should have led with that, <laughs> but yes. So basically that would just be an easy way for an individual to not feel so salesy. I know that was another question that came in here. They didn't want to feel salesy. They use sure. that term because you're, you're giving something with deferral program. That's the idea yeah. of it. Absolutely. What do we do for our referral program? Yeah. So what we do we give, give and get? Yeah, we, we give the agent that's making the referral a $50 credit. And if the person that they have referred uh, books a, a listing with us or an appointment with us, we give them a $50 credit as well. So mm -hmm. each side of that gets a $50 credit. Now, you know, in the grand scheme of things, they're not necessarily worried about 50 bucks, um, but it gives them something. It shows that, hey, we appreciate the extra step you're taking to help us, you mm -hmm. know, get introduced to, to more people. Um, the, the salesy point, that's a good point, Todd. Um, I, I'm able to do it in a way that is pretty natural because I've just built good trusting relationships with people. So mm -hmm. for me, I, I know what that, that um, listener is getting at because I don't like to be salesy either, but I've developed such good relationships with the realtors that we're working with in, in the Toledo market that I can ask that question and they know they're helping me. I'm helping them. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it's a lot of give and take and we're just, we're there to support each other. And 50 bucks is still, I mean, 50 bucks is still 50 bucks, right? Right. Right. 
Right. You know, if, it, if it's a new agent, I don't know real well. I don't ask for the referral right away because I just don't have that relationship. So no, that that's a fair point. The salesy part of it. Mm -hmm. And, and yep. just as a side note here, that referral program we are building in Spiro right now. So it will be a give and a get that you'll be able to define inside your system. And then also we're hoping to add that you could give an agent a different offer too. So maybe your standard is give and get 25. Mm -hmm. uh, you could increase that on an agent level. Maybe you have them in an influencer program where they might get a little bit more, but we're building that out right now should hit around the end of 23. So that's exciting. Can I shift gears and just finish um, yeah, what please. I do during slow times? So I'll, I'll try and keep this succinct. During a, our slower season, uh, like today, I actually had no shoots. So I spent my day today making phone calls to current clients. I made phone calls to uh, some uh, uh, clients we don't quite yet have, uh, but I'm trying mm -hmm. to trying to get a meeting with them. Um, I offer to treat people to coffee. I like coffee meetings. I just I like getting to know people one on one. That's kind of how I best um, get to know people and, and introduce myself and learn about their business. Um, the other thing is customers and clients that you have um, get into their offices, ask for the opportunity to present during their, their weekly meetings. Uh, so presentations at meetings, uh, I go into high gear on those during this slower season, uh, events that you get asked to sponsor, find creative ways to do it affordably because you can't sponsor every event. We have a, a prior uh, podcast on that. Um, so, for example, uh, a group of offices, uh, brokerage, they had their Christmas party back on Tuesday were their preferred partner. They said, hey, can you come and take pictures at our Christmas party? Santa's going to be there. We'd love to do some Santa photos. I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> Didn't cost us a dime to sponsor that. We get introduced. Hey, thanks for, you know, to Craig Wow Video Tours. Make sure you check them out. We got, you know, a nice, nice promotion from them and had a lot of great conversations while I was taking some fun event photos. So it, as much as you can get out in front of people and just make connections during a slower season, work on those things. Yeah, that's so awesome. Now, can I ask you one quick question, Craig, about slow season? Because I think at least in most of the U.S., we are in a, a winter-ish, we're, we're cooling down as far as temperature-wise. And many of you might have seen your bookings go from maybe one a day or you were used to getting four a day or maybe you're, you know, used doing 50 a day. And now that number has drastically dropped and I think I read from one person online that like, I literally have one appointment booked this month hmm. and I've, I've seen a lot of this. And so is ever like, is the world ending right now, Craig, or what's like, is this, if, what if this is someone's first slow season? Yeah. Like, is this normal or is there just a problem with my business? What would your advice be? All the flashback and horror is coming back from my first year doing this where I, yeah, I was in a full out panic. How am I going to survive? Um, yes, this is normal. You're okay. Um, this is a very seasonal business. It's going to slow way down, at least for us in Ohio, you know, in the Ohio, Michigan, Indiana area that we're, that we're in, um, it slows way, way down. So my December November, I saw a little bit of a drop. December has dropped even more. January and February will be slow. We just plan for it. Don't sit on your rear end and do nothing and, and worry. Get out there and get in front of people. Use that time to build the, your, fill your pipeline so that when spring hits, the phone starts ringing. And in my first year, that first winter I went into, yes, I panicked, but I put in the work to meet new agents, to get into offices make phone calls and emails, you know, there's the Instagram method, do the work now, do the, the planting, you're planting the seeds right now. In the spring, the crops start to grow, the phone starts to ring, the emails start to come in. That first full year, Todd, I went from doing 35 listings when I first started my business before I joined the WOW team. I did 35 mm -hmm. listings between like July and the end of the year. Over the winter, I worked my rear end off to make those phone calls, meet those agents. And in that first full year <clears throat> after that, that start, I shot 535 listings. The work wow. pays off. The work pays off. Put it in. Don't panic. Um, don't lose your focus. Just put the work in and go for it. And you're going to, you will see results. Oh, 
That's so inspiring, Craig. Thank you for sharing. And if you are having an oh crap moment right now, please, <laughs> please take this to heart. Literally, yeah. we all go through it. This yep. is my eight, 19th slow season. And it <laughs> is, I actually look forward to slow season now because yeah. we build. This is the time to like, let's look at every part of our business. Like you would right. not believe the projections upon projections and numbers that we're reviewing right now at WOW. And it's all strategic. It's all to grow when the spring comes. Right. Now, one thing I'd, I'd like to, let me pivot into just a side question on that, Craig, because we, we talk about some decently advanced tactics on here and some things that maybe listeners aren't, would never even consider. Like that's a little maybe overwhelming to go to a Christmas party to ask people to coffee. So what if someone is just at home right now, hoping that the bookings come in and they're not, they don't want to be salesy, but they're a little terrified about not having any shoots or what they expect on the schedule. Is it, where should someone start? Like, do, should we, should they just expect to go hold an event, three coffees, a broker's meeting and, and two Christmases with Santa? Yeah, no, I, I, I would say no. Yeah. I, start small, start with your best relationship that your best client that you have a really good relationship with. Mm. Share with them your goals and dreams. Um, so mm. my first client, his name was Scott, <clears throat> and mm. I had an initial coffee with him, told him what my dream and my goal was with starting this business and showed him a couple of examples that I had shot for free. And his eyes got big. He's like, Craig, I'm using my cell phone right now to take pictures. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. Gave me a 12 shoot contract. From then on, now Scott and I, we, I knew him from before. Um, and I would consider him a friend. He became my biggest cheerleader. And he would just tell, mm. you know, one, he would tell people about me. And two, when people started seeing his pictures, they're like, who are you using? And he would pass along my name. So I would f find your best uh, relationship client, take them out to coffee, take them out to coffee because you're comfortable mm. with them, right? You've got a good relationship. Good so you can relax a little bit. You're, you're not trying to sell them because they're already your client anyway. Share with them your goals and dreams for 2024. Ask them what their goals and dreams are for 2024 and see how you can help each other. You know, as oh, they're, as they're giving their ideas of what they need help with, say, awesome, here's some things I can do to help you with that. Now, here's my goals and dreams. Is there anything you can do to help me? Because I'd like to work for some more realtors in your brokerage. You know, is there... It, it just, it's a natural conversation. So start with somebody you're comfortable with and just build from there. The, the snowball gets bigger. Oh, so smart. So smart. And then to ask them what their goals and dreams are mm -hmm. right. is, is very smart because then it's a partnership. So right. great, Craig. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's move on to uh, question number two. Well, th this is a sub question to, to, to this particular sales question, I'm going to devote my time. Um, I had an individual and I don't have it in front of me, but they actually asked about hiring a salesperson hmm. and they were doing a lot of shooting still. And I don't know if they even had a VA or an admin hired yet. And my response was that I would not go directly to hiring a salesperson. Right. I, I think an individual, they wanted to do that because they didn't feel really confident in sales, but this is your business and you don't have to sell, take, Cra take Craig's advice, but I would not start your first hire or one of your first hires being a salesperson. It's from experience, it could, it's a completely different person to, to manage and to support and <laughs> salespeople, um, Typically, and it depends on your market, you need to be able to make sure that they can make what a good salesperson needs to make a decent living. It's, it's different than a VA, way different than if you're paying your VA, you know, $1,000 is a great monthly salary or $1,500 is a great monthly salary if your VA is in the Philippines. That doesn't even scratch the surface of what a salesperson is going to be. Right. So... I would do what Craig did and Craig that winter worked really hard. And then Craig, you, you got so busy. 
how did you manage your time there? Because you still wanted to keep some of your sales hat on. That might be a good inspiration for these for a, this listener or the person who was like, hey, I'm going to hire a salesperson. It might be a good path for them to travel. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I wouldn't hire salespeople. Um, if you're the owner of the business, nobody's going to sell it better than you because you're passionate about what it is that you do. You're going to... Mm -hmm whether you're comfortable with it or not, you're going to sell it the best because it's your baby. Right. Um, so what I did is, is things were starting to grow. The I, I never did hire a virtual assistant, but that would have been the next person I hired. My first hire was actually another photographer so that mm -hmm. they could cover some more shoots, take some of those shoots off my plate so I could still stay in contact with current clients and make the calls to, to new prospects. Mm -hmm. So I, I would agree either a virtual assistant or another photographer to help you with appointments that are starting to get, get your schedule filled more up. Awesome. W one more question on that. Was there, was that the point and remind me, I should remember this. I apologize, but sure. so uh, there was a, there was a point to where you didn't hire a virtual assistant, but actually wow. And you teamed up together. Right. And then we yeah. were doing a lot of those virtual assistant tasks and the that editing and the, Okay. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think of it that way, but yes. Uh, wow. Actually, I guess wow was my first hire. <laughs> yeah. I think of virtual assistant being more administrative tasks, but wow, wow. Video tours became kind of like the back end engine to my office. So wow did my editing, uh, because I figured out I, I couldn't scan my business and try and edit and turn things around the next day. I could only do two, maybe three shoots a day at max. Um, so I, we, you know, wow. And, and C imaging partnered, you did my, uh, photo editing, video editing, uh, delivery of the media. So all mm -hmm. things that I just, I didn't have time for. And honest, quite honestly, you did better. Um, and that allowed me to scale very quickly to be able to shoot more listings in a day. Um, so yeah, actually, uh, wow was my first hire then another photographer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think many of you will go that same direction. The important thing is you just have to understand what task you are doing that you should not be doing. I, right. I this was a, in a podcast or two. I use this quite a bit, actually. This is from Austin Chevron. And he talks about using your time and categorizing it based on admin, nurse and doctor. So if you, if you think of a nurse versus a doctor versus you're an admin, uh, those tasks or, or those types of tasks, excuse me, you should try to focus most of your time on those doctor type tasks. For us as real estate media owners, we should be focused on client acquisition. Mm -hmm. And that is either single agents, teams, broker deals, things like that, but growing your business, I would categorize that as the super important doctor task and then admin type task, the, the, the same thing. So who's going to edit your photos, edit your media, who's going to look over them. Who's going to going to send that out. You don't need to do that. You might think you need to, but you really don't need to you find someone to do that. And then you can go do the important things. And listen, Craig went from 35 and the last half of his first year to 500 and some shoots in his second year. So. Yeah. Look, can I play a devil's advocate for a second here? Oh, I love it. Please do. Okay. So I've seen this discussion in some of the online groups and there, there are some, and we're all wired differently, but there are some that do not want anyone else editing their photos that they mm -hmm. have a particular style. Um, and so I've seen the argument and I think this might be a valid argument that I'm going to charge more for what I do because I, I'm spending the time to edit those things. I have a very unique style and they're basically, they're setting their business up as a boutique real estate media service. Now, if you're not looking to scale a huge number of shoots or bring on a staff and things like that, that might work for you. But otherwise mm -hmm. we would say, yeah, bring on a, a VA, bring on another photographer, hire out your editing. That's how you're going to scale and grow. But again, if you, if you're just a, not, I shouldn't say just a boutique, don't think that we're downplaying that. If that's what your passion is, Hey, go for it. Yeah. I, I, I'm a little more direct on that one. Craig is saying okay. like, if you don't think, if you think you have to edit your own photos and you're not 
one of the handful of super high end architectural photographers in the US or the world, like you're not getting published in major publications, then you need to have someone edit your photos. Okay. And if you don't think that they can do the editing that you're doing, and you're not at that upper echelon of deliveries, you know, of, of talent in the U S or the world, then the problem is the fact that you just weren't, aren't able to train or communicate your editing style mm. to that individual. So if you are doing that for real estate, I would like to I, just drag, like, I think you're just wrong on that. I think you need to figure out a way to offload that because there are some very, very talented editors around the world and the time it takes to edit a photo correctly, if they know the procedures that the 12 or 1200 things that you want to take place every time you need to train them to do it because when you have a camera in your hands i mean quite honestly when you have a camera in your hands hands that's when you're making the most money it's not when you're editing that's true but again i, I it was my goal to run and scale a business you know we shoot 12 we shot twelve thousand last year like i wanted to shoot a lot of jobs so i don't really mm -hmm. that was never something that was a goal of mine uh, but i just be careful about that um that thought of that no one else can do it. Yeah. Share your thoughts. Leave us a comment if you're watching on YouTube. Yeah, please do. This is a good one. Okay, yeah. Craig, let's All go right. to the next one. All right. Let's go to, okay, so this individual, he, I had met him in Vegas, the rep conference, and um, we talked about broker deals. And now oh, we've done yeah. at least one, if not two podcasts on broker deals. And this individual felt like he had a good relationship with the broker and was going to go in and pitch this idea of a broker deal. And so he and I talked quite a bit and I, I won't go into that because we have really good media on that. But one thing he, he texted me one hour before my broker deal presentation, any last minute advice for me, I'm having a hard time imagining how to have a good back and forth conversation with so many closed end questions. <laughs> uh, laughing, crying face. The risk is low with this broker. So even if I'm awkward, it'll be fine. Just trying to make sure I don't come across salesy. Mm, there it is again. So my advice on here is, and Craig already gave this, so I'll be brief with it, but if you're genuine, you won't be salesy. Mm -hmm. And a broker deal, if you think it's only good for you, then you don't completely understand the broker deal because it's mm. equally as good for them because they're going to get a consistent quality of marketing and easy to use system. They're going to have a recruiting tool where they can recruit agents in. They'll, they'll front the cost. That's a humongous recruiting tool. It's an easy, bar low barrier of entry because the broker's paying for it. So that would that would just be my pitch back was if, if you, I understand you can't sell something you don't believe in. So don't, but if you feel as though it's only good for you as a broker, a broker deal is only good for you, then let's talk or go back and listen to one of the very early podcasts because we sell them like crazy at wow. And it's good for both parties, brokers mm -hmm. and owners of companies. And, and we work with very large companies that do billions in real estate a year. And these are very in a, intelligent individuals, these owners that we have these deals with. And if it was not good for them, trust me, they would not do it. My, my other point in my text back to this individual was, I said, play a song that gets you pumped up, that gets you excited. Play it loud in your car before you go in and go in confident. I had that from a coach. I had that from a coach of mine once that just, because we think, we overthink it. So yeah. music, I think is a great medium just to, to connect with the song. It's probably Brandon Lake for me. I don't know who it is for you guys. I was going to ask. That. So what's your song, Todd? <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, of course it's Brandon Lake. <laughs> so, and so get it, go in and just pitch it. Get out of your own head. Let your left brain turn off and just go say, just go do it. And he even said it like he justified his response. He's like, the risk is so low that 
that he said the lyrics is so low that even if I'm awkward, it'll be just fine. So yeah, <laughs> have some confidence when you go in. I know this individual is not awkward. We had great conversations in Vegas. So I would just yeah. say, be confident, get pumped up and go in and pitch it. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? They're going to say no, right. but that you're at the same spot you're at right now. Yeah. So, you, you know, I'm, I'm thinking back to that um, the suggestion I made of, you know, how do you, how do you start your sales effort and start with your client that you have the best relationship with? And I'm just thinking for this individual, if they have a really good relationship with this broker, shoot, I'd have some fun with it and just say, all right, I'm, I'm feeling really awkward right now. Like I have a big idea that I want to talk about, but I don't want to just be honest, you know, say, I don't want to look like a dork in front of you. It, it just put it out there. But maybe that's just my personality. I, I think the more authentic you are with people, it just, it breaks the ice. You know, mm-hmm. everybody knows what a sales meeting is and <clears throat> their, your walls could be up. It could feel awkward. So if you just demolish those walls right away and just acknowledge the elephant in the room and have some fun with it, you're going to have a great conversation. Craig, that's such good advice. I I use that mechanism all the time. Now, I will tell you that I love an awkward situation. <laughs> I don't weird. know why. You're weird. I am. I just I love an I love awkward silence. Honestly, I love to go and eat like eat dinner by myself. Like when I'm out somewhere, like if my family's away, I like I to go eat that. dinner and, and then and as a test, like I'm not I'm never on my phone. Like I like to just sit there and see if I can just be like content with Hmm. not technology, with just being, so anyways, that's me. So I love awkward situations, but if you are, just say what you feel, it's like, you would not believe the response it gets. I, my mother's a lot like this. So I have this too, and it's a blessing and it's a curse because sometimes people go like, what did you just say? (laughs) But at least you're authentic. And at the end of the day, if I can't be me, then it's a lot it's a lot more tough to do that. You know, I, when I started in business, I used to always, you know, the phone would ring and I would run in the other room, make sure the door was closed and I would put on my professional voice. Yep. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. There's that, there's a fine line between faking it till you make it and then just faking it forever. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes if I'm at home and it's after hours, I'll answer and I'm like, Hey, I'm so you know, like, Hey, good to hear from you. Hey, I just, so you know, I'm at home. So there, my kids might have a meltdown. There might be something, but I wanted to make sure I take <laughs> care of you. So if there's noise in the background, I apologize. Yeah. And, and, and so I just say it like, I don't make sure that like kids are just kids. I don't make sure that they have to try not to say anything, or I don't try to lock myself in the bathroom or whatever it may be. I'm just honest with them. And, you know, 99 times out of 100 people appreciate that. Yeah. It it goes back to that adage of people buy from who they know, like, and trust. So if Mm -hmm. you're being real with people, one, they know you. Two, they probably like you. And and they're going to trust you because you're being real with them. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. And once you get that through, you know, that, that mental barrier, sales really is not hard if it's, if it's something you believe in and, and enjoy mm-hmm. doing. It's just, it's not. Agreed. Well said, Craig. Craig, let's, we'll take one more question here Alrighty. and let's then we'll it. wrap it up. Sorry if we, sorry if we didn't get to your question, keep sending them in. We're going to continue to do this. Uh, so this individual, I'll read the question here. I'm going to, uh, I'll paraphrase here. Okay. So this individual said we met at rep and, uh, I know it's late for you, so sorry for the late text. Uh, one to get your thoughts on something. Might be a weird question. I'm working on client acquisition right now. Okay, check. That's great. Trying to get in front of people to talk. Mm-hmm. One of my agents got into an office party this Thursday where they said 200 agents are going to be there and I can present. I was very, I was super stoked about it until I found out it was being held at a nightclub. <laughs> Now, I come from a conservative Christian background, so let's just say it's not my vibe at all. Laughing, crying face. Do you think I should just suck it up and do it and take the opportunity or pass due to my conscience? What would you do in my shoes? Man, I so identify with this question, Todd. Yes. What would Uh, you you say to this this individual? Okay, so... This is going to get into both sales and faith, okay? And a little bit of psychology, which we've talked about in past uh, past episodes. So one, 
yeah, I'm, I'm a, a follower of Jesus. I'm a, a Christian. So I have that same conservative background. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know I'm a licensed pastor as well. So part of part of the mm-hmm. denomination I belong to, licensed pastors make an agreement, we're not going to consume alcohol. Um, mm-hmm. No judgment on those that do. That's that's not the point. But for me, okay, I don't I don't drink either. So I get that. Number two, I'm an introvert. <laughs> So I mentioned before, I like one-on-one coffee meetings because I can do, I can do the one-on-one conversation when I go into a big group and it's that social loud, you know, music, uh, drinking, some people are, might've had a few too many. I get real uncomfortable as well. So I totally understand this question. So number three, if I'm going into a situation where there are people that have different beliefs than I do. I cannot expect them to act the way I do with what my faith teaches or my personal convictions. So mm-hmm. you're not compromising anything because one, you're not participating in yourself. You're not doing the drinking, right? Um, but you're meeting people where they're at. Okay. There are, mm-hmm. we live in a world with all sorts of different beliefs and, and worldviews and culture and things like that. You can't just disengage from the world and disengage from the business world just because it's a situation that you might not necessarily be super comfortable with. So I would say if you've been invited to a business situation uh, or a business event where it is more of a social atmosphere, hey, you've got an opportunity to meet people where they're at, be authentic, be you, and share your business. Um, But I get it. It's still uncomfortable. (laughs) I look for the individuals that might also be kind of off by themselves and go strike, strike up a conversation with them. I don't tend to insert myself into conversations of groups of people. I, I feel awkward doing it. So I get that, but I don't, I don't avoid the invitation. Did that make sense? Yeah, that, that's, that's a great answer, Craig. It's better than the answer I gave even. Um, and that's great advice. And, and just one practical thing that Craig said there, I, want, I don't know if you guys picked up on it, but I'm gonna make sure I said it again, but in almost every situation you're in, like an event like this, you're if you think you're the only one that feels a little awkward to be there, you're not. So just look for mm-hmm. look for the people that are like you in there and go find them and and connect with them. And the neat thing about it is, is if you felt uncomfortable, typically when we're in uncomfortable situations, we there's potential for growth. Yeah. Yep. You know, I'm not saying you would go and become a better dancer growing, you know, your dance moves, but <laughs> yeah, that was a ne- terrible joke. I just will thought, never happen for me. <laughs> I was going to say, Craig, when he does coffee, he actually has this little dance he does. Um, you know, we put on some, <laughs> you know, it, anyways, we're going on, I'm, I'm going way off edge. You here, can but, tell we're recording yeah. this at the end of the day, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think there's a good opportunity, no matter the situation you're in, to look for the positive and to look how you can grow and to look mm-hmm. how you can positively impact others in that situation. Good, yeah. bad, and different. I think you can, and sometimes this takes just some mental strength to push through a situation, to look for the good, even when mm-hmm. you're in the bad. And that is that's a fabulous way to live because if you're in the bad and only look at the bad, it gets pretty dark. Mm. So if you can be in the bad and look for the good, that's just a much better way to live. Yeah. There you go. Find the people, you know, at the event too. say hello to them. And more than nine times out of 10, if they're talking with a group of people that you don't know, they'll introduce you anyway. And then you can just get chatting mm-hmm. with people. So look for the people, you know, look for others that might be feeling a little uncomfortable as well and befriend them. Yeah. Great advice. Well, that's going to do it for today, Craig. I think we thank you all for staying on with us. Those are the questions. Send them in again, please. You can get, uh, you can reach us at hello at spiral.media. So please send us your questions. You can leave them in the comments on the YouTube comments. And you can find us on Facebook too. Uh, Just anyway, we're all over the place. Send them to us. We'd love to answer your question on the podcast here.
Absolutely. And if you have questions about uh, Spiro, the, Spiro, the software, uh, again, you can email hello at Spiro.media. Uh, if you have how-to questions, chances are we have a tutorial video that addresses it. If you go to our website, go to Spiro.media, click on that knowledge base link at the top in the top nav. Uh, there's some great tutorials that you can find there as well. Uh, but again, yeah, reach out to us on, on any of the channels that you find us on. So, all right. Well, Todd, it's been fun and uh, we look forward to more questions in the future and and um, yeah you guys have a great week and make sure you take time to be thankful for the blessings in your life and take a breath have a great week thank you for joining us for the Spiro podcast managing your real estate photography and videography business this is a production of Spiro and wow video tours you can find out more about Spiro's real estate media business management software at our website spiro.media